Welcome back, everybody. I hope you enjoyed lunch. So we're going to get started the afternoon session with our one-on-one -on -one discussion with Amy McDonough and Denise Yan on healthy tracking. Denise, Denise has been with me since 2011. She's been a moderator, an advisor, and a friend, and I'm very happy that she decided to join us again this year. She's also an in-demand consultant and a speaker with more than 25 years of experience helping organizations take their brands to new heights. She has developed her innovative brand building philosophy while working with world-class brands such as Sony, Burger King, and Frito-Lay, and leading sports and fitness companies including Oakley, New Balance, and Roadrunner Sports. Denise is the author of the best-selling book, What Great Brands Do, and she has contributed to outlets including the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, and the Harvard Business Review. Straight from sunny San Diego, California, please welcome Denise Leon. my aerobics voice because I used to be an aerobics instructor, but actually now I think that you can hear me. Okay. All right. Um, we're here to talk about healthy tracking specifically in the corporate world. And it's a very important topic because really employee wellness programs are the norm. Now, according to a survey by ADP, um, nearly 80% of organizations with more than 1,000 employees have an employee wellness program. Nearly 80% of, of organizations with over 1,000 and 44% of those be, with employees of 50 to 999 have an employee wellness program as well. So very, very common for corporations to be investing in this. And ABI research estimates that in just five short years, more than 13 million wearable activity tracking devices will be integrated into employee wellness programs. And that's up from fewer than 200,000 today, so, or I should say last year. So it's huge, huge growth that's predicted for this market. And it's no wonder. Um, I, I read about BP, and BP America has seen its corporate wellness program in which they hand out Fitbits to nearly 30,000 of their employees, spouses, and retirees. They have actually been able to reduce their health care costs below the national average growth rate of 6%. So it's no wonder that companies are very interested in this space. Obviously, there are huge benefits for both the companies and the employees of having um, an employee wellness program and specifically integrating digital health. Um, there's the camaraderie, the office morale, um, overall product productivity goes up. There's also cost savings because there's decreased absenteeism. Um, healthcare costs for employees and employers goes down. And then there are indirect financial benefits like team building, job satisfaction, that kind of thing. But there are some concerns. Um, you know, I think that, that costs and RAI, ROI, return on investment, are still a question mark for companies. Um, there's still um, only a small body of evidence about the ROI from these programs. And so I think some companies are in a wait and see mode. And there's also concerns about privacy, employee data getting into the wrong hands or being used the wrong way. So growing field, hot topic, lots of controversial issues. Here to explore those with me is Amy McDonough from Fitbit. And I'll go ahead and let you introduce yourself a little bit and what you are doing in this space. Great. Thank you, Denise. Um, happy to be here. Uh, thank you all for attending today. Um, so yeah, it is, uh, as you said, really um, very strong area of growth for Fitbit and I think for the industry. Um, and we're going to talk, I'll, I have a few slides that I'll share as well as a video from uh, another employer, BP, who we work with, but another employer, uh, Atlantic Packaging, and kind of kind of highlighting how they're using trackers within their larger wellness um, solution. And I think you know there are some um, great best practices that we can talk about to make so sure that things like privacy and how do we address ROI, and so I'm really looking forward to that piece of the conversation. Good. Um, so I run the, the corporate wellness um, piece, which we call Fitbit Wellness, um, of the, the Fitbit business overall. Fitbit really started as a consumer brands company uh, seven years ago, and very early on in those first days, I was, I was there, um, there were employers uh, asking and they're saying, we want a, a, a program that's more effective, more engaging, um, 
quite frankly, more validated um, because you're getting, rather than me signing my little uh, card on a daily basis that says I walked my 10,000 steps a day and cramming that in on the 30th day of the month <laughs> to get that in, um, you know, now I'm doing that um, in a way that's reliable, systematic, and easier for the employee to participate. So maybe we can go through a couple of those slides that to help be great. with the conversation and sure. then go from there. Okay, all great. right, go take it away. Wonderful. Is there a clicker? Let's see. All right. Um, so just kind of little background, which we already kind of did. So I'm going to go through quickly after I come in these slides, because I think what's really interesting here is having the conversation. And certainly, we want to make sure we have a little time for your questions as well. Um, but really, what we're providing is a solution that goes beyond the actual hardware of a device. Um, and is an experience. So again, that camaraderie that you spoke to about being able to compete with your colleagues, um, that is a very strong motivator for a lot of employees um, to know that, oh, my, my colleagues are all supportive of this relationship as well. Um, making it easy for employees to participate is another huge one. Um, and that uh, there's a software that provides visibility as well, and we'll talk about the privacy aspects of that as well. How many of you here own an activity tracker? Just curious. All right. <laughs> That's great. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about wearables. Um, Denise addressed this a little bit, so we're just going to do some very high level, because I really want to talk about the wellness side. Um, but as Denise pointed out, uh, wearables are here to stay, um, as evidenced by a room, a very large room over there. <laughs> um, and the fact that we had to actually move into a new space this year for the wearable technology section. And this is the number that are, is expected to ship into uh, last year in 2014. The final number isn't quite out yet, but that's a very large number. So it's beyond kind of your trend and into kind of a, a movement, literally and figuratively. Um, what I think is really interesting is that not only is awareness high when you look at that compared to some of the other products you might see even on the show floor here, but also that their intent to purchase those products is also really high. So um, what if, when you bring these products into a corporate space, what you're doing is really capitalizing on a demand that's already there. Um, let's talk a little bit about the state of wellness, though, and what employers are thinking about. So again, it's very similar to the metrics that Denise mentioned. Um, you can look at the percentage of employers, especially at the higher um, ends of larger employers who are you know, uh, very focused on the health of their employees, long-term engagement with their employees, partially responsible for the health care of their employees in a lot of cases, um, that they're very focused on maintaining to have a wellness program. They're also really tying their fund account contributions. So this is if you have a healthcare savings account or something, they're tying that to behavior. Um, and that wasn't possible five years ago, seven years ago, um, before you had these connected devices because you were writing all these things down on paper. So only with uh, this technology has it become possible for them to tie behaviors and long-term behaviors, not just a moment in time, did you do your health screening once a year, but what's your behavior throughout the year, and then tying that back to your healthcare coverage. Um, so technology has made all of this possible. Um, and a lot of employers are then, again, doing rewards um, and offering um, different levels of programs and plans based on that activity level. But there's a lot of opportunity. Uh, at this point, only about 6% are receiving their activity tracker through their employer. So there's a lot of room for growth in this area. So you've heard about companies like BP and Atlantic Packaging that you'll see that have already um, started there. But there's a lot of room for, for employers to grow into this space and to really build it as part of their package. And integrating it into the program is really what makes it successful. So making it part of the overall benefits design is where we really see the impact on ROI. And I'd even expand that to say VOI and your value on your investment, which would include things like the productivity and absenteeism and um, you know, enjoyable place to work and recruiting and retention of employees. Um, I think this is fairly obvious to everyone about kind of why wearables now, and it, that's why we're all here. Technology has made that possible. So we'll kind of, kind of skip through some of these um, and just talk a little bit about the five trends that I think we're seeing. Um, the first is that the data is verifiable and it's automatic. So again, you're not writing it down on a little piece of paper every day. 
Um, it's also connected and networked, so the cloud, um, making that all possible, making it instant, making it on your smartphone so you're walking around and you're syncing instantaneously. It also adds to the level of engagement when you can get a notice that says, Denise has just passed you in steps. It might make you want to walk a few steps more. It's social. Um, so not now your wellness program isn't over here and your life is over here, but you can bring those things all together. So I can comp compete with my best friend, my mother-in-law, my husband, and my colleagues all in the same platform, which makes that engaging throughout my entire life and is much more um, effective and engaging and driving results. In fact, about 27% more steps daily. So for every step that you, or for every friend, excuse me, that you have, um, we've shown that uh, up to a point of diminishing returns, you're, you're gonna take about 27% more steps on, on average. So imagine that in a room for, full of your colleagues and how motivating that can be. It's also a lifestyle. Um, again, why the pavilion has gotten bigger this year. So it's part of, we have a partnership with Toy Birch, which is the one you see there. Um, you know, you think of other products in this category that have really made it part of, a, it's a fashion statement, and it's part of who you are and part of your being, and being able to support that from your employees is really um, an important trend and taking advantage of everywhere you might want to wear it. So all of these things are important in making it a long-lasting trend and, not, and part of, again, a strategy as opposed to, hey, this is something I'm going to do for a couple weeks because it's fun and I'm checking the box for my corporate wellness program. It becomes part of your lifestyle and becomes habitual. Um, and you're taking advantage of the demand. Um, so the demand is already there from people who are interested in getting um, trackers. Um, and they're already going to buy them for themselves. So you're supporting something that they're already interested in doing. So just real quick, what I think the trends that we're seeing are that wearables really enable wellness programs to be that much more effective on the corporate side because they are precise and accurate. They're connected. They're social, so you're able to take advantage and get that 27% lift. Um, they're personal, um, and they're loved, and they're asked for. So I think that's really what's driving um, the behaviors in the corporate space. Um, Denise, would you, do, should we have a little conversation about that, and, or do you want me to walk into the video first, and we can kind of why don't, like we, why don't we show the video? Because uh, from what I understand, it'll help us understand how one company is using this, and then we'll talk about how other companies are. So. That sounds great. Um, so the one company that we're going to talk about is Atlantic Packaging. So they um, have about 350 employees. They're based in uh, North Carolina. And um, they really use them um, in a way that I just think is inspiring, and I'm going to let them show it with the video, because I think that's um, where it becomes really powerful and integrated. And um, they've done this for a couple years running now, so it's a long-lasting program. Initially, when we came up with the idea for a wellness program, um, I felt like it was really important that the foundations of that program be about the employees. I mean, let's put together a program that will actually benefit the employees and encourage health, encourage wellness. And I felt like if we kept the well-being of our employees at the forefront of the program, and that's what drives the program, what drives the agenda it would have long-term benefits. I think that what surprised me the most was how many improvements people have made, whether it's tobacco cessation, quitting smoking, people that have not exercised at all to running 10Ks and half marathons, to people having extremely high triglycerides and lowering them, you know, cutting them in half. And that's not stuff you see every day. Up until February of this year, um, I had been a smoker and smoked for 20 plus years. I was reluctant to get involved with it because of all the travel that I do because I, I rarely have an opportunity to do anything consistently because of just, I, didn't, I never know what where state I'm going to be sleeping in that night. When I met with Megan, the first thing she said, you need to stop eating all them cookies. Too much Hawaiian punch. I used to love, I can go through maybe two to three jugs a week. You know, I look around the office and the people literally look completely different. Ever since I started the Fitbit, I get bored easily. So I got I started walking and then got bored with that. So then I started riding bikes and I got bored with that. So I, start, I started running and, and that I haven't gotten bored with. Uh, I've really enjoyed that. I'm walking on the track, which I'd never done before. And I can do a mile at a time. First time I tried it, I could do two laps and I can do 16 now. Gary, at the end of here, Pop, which we all call him, 
He started coming back and said, come on, let's go for a walk. And uh, we started walking together. And five miles became seven miles. I do pretty much the whole trail. It took me about three and a half hours, but it motivated me. It really was a good challenge. Like one time we walked what, 14 miles. 14 miles. And when I made it back, I couldn't even bend my leg. <laughs> I ran for five weeks. After that, I went and ran my first 5K. Um, and then now I've been running for five months. And coming up this Saturday, I'm running my first half marathon. And I'm really looking forward to it. My results are great. I've, I've lost about 15 pounds. But I'm in better shape than I've, I've ever been. I've done things I never thought I would do. I lost 14 pounds. So it's working out real good for me. As far as my health, I've lost 30 pounds since I began this thing uh, back in June, I think it was. And I'm in the great condition. Uh, uh, after I lost all that weight, I went to a, had a physical done and I had my doctor look at me and he said, man, everything is perfect. There's nothing wrong. There's, everything is great. I feel better. Uh, my, my knees don't hurt. My ankles don't hurt. My, my hips don't hurt. I don't have problem getting out of bed. Um, I have more I have more energy, although I thought I had energy before, which is, which is what's phenomenal. I've lost 30 pounds, uh, which is fantastic. I've gone from a size 14 to a size 8. Yay me. I went to my cardiologist. I have AFib. Go once a year. And I've never seen a doctor excited. He was excited. He said, I wish more companies would do this for their employees. He said, it's a benefit to you and it's a benefit to the company. It has been uh, a life-changing experience for a large number of people in, in, in this office. It just like kind of snowballed. I never did all this to lose 30 pounds and run a half marathon. It just kind of happened. You know, one thing led to another, and I mean, for all I know, I may run a marathon next year. And can you imagine? I mean, can you imagine? I'm almost 50 years old. I'm in better shape than I've ever been in my entire life. I feel fantastic. And it's just incredible to know that, you know, because of what we started with this Fitbit program, I can go outside and I can run for three hours nonstop, and it's just insane. The Fitbit program has not only changed my routine, it's changed my life. I just really want to thank Atlantic for everything they do. It makes me want to be a better employee. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it has been an enlightenment to me to know that Atlantic cares. To me, they seem like they care about the employee's help. Yeah, they really do. Rusty and Wes and all the senior management, I don't think you guys could have made a better decision to put this plan in place. Um, so thank you for my new way of life. And the winner is... Marion Mercer. It's me! Three keys to your new ride. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> My God, this is awesome. Amy, thank you so much for sharing that. That's so inspiring. I, I really love seeing the stories and, and hearing about the transformation. Um, now, certainly there's a lot that went into the implementation of that program. So you can, can you help us understand kind of behind the scenes what happened between Atlantic Packaging, Fitbit to make this partnership, and then how did Atlantic Panic Packaging get this kind of participation and these kinds of results. Great. Um, yeah, so I mean, I think absolutely. So I think there, it is a partnership, and I think that's, um, it does have to be integrated into the overall solutions that an employer is providing. That's what makes it successful. So if you're just, if you have a little program on the side that's not tied into the culture of your organization or to your 
your benefits design or your packaging or even just, you know, as they said, the senior management participation, all of those things are so key to success. Um, so they have a lot of those things already built into their culture. So they have a very supportive um, senior management team, as you saw some of them being interviewed there. Um, they, um, they have a health coach on site. They have trails outside. And so what they did was kind of emphasize what they already have. Um, and, then they, and then they just made it easier and more fun. Um, so they subsidized uh, the Fitbit trackers for their employees. Um, and we see employers, we, we do require that employers subsidize because that shared commitment to health is what helps drive results. Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes our employers will give them um, to their employees, and sometimes they ask for it to be a cost share, or mm -hmm. almost like a copay, so that everybody has a little skin in the game. Um, and that's uh, really dependent on the organization and kind of what their what fits best with their culture. Mm -hmm. um, and then they really they built in this case a 12 week cha challenge. They run it a couple of times a year. Again, based on the cycle of your business, that might change a little bit, and that's what makes it really successful is building it into that culture. The rewards are not always Jeeps in the case <laughs> of a lot of our employers. Um, and they don't even have to be necessarily monetary. Uh, so a lot of our employers, we have one employer, this wouldn't work in our casual San Francisco office at Fitbit, but we've got a lot of employers who are, you know, maybe they're a law office or an attorney's firm, they have a casual Friday, and that is huge. So the winning team gets to have that, um, you know, once a month. What we did in our office is we have the cheesiest five foot gold trophy that we could find and it's bragging rights. So the team that walks the most steps, because we walk our own walk internally, we hand it to that team and they get to, to really validate, you know, they get to validate that, that they did the most steps that month. And amazingly, that, you know, that drives results. So it really is fitting it into that culture, getting that executive support. Um, that's what really helps drive the engagement. And again, you're capitalizing on a trend where you've got 60% of the US already saying, I want one of those for myself. So mm -hmm. if a company can help subsidize that, um, you're, it's going to drive that great level of engagement, much more than a traditional wellness program. OK. And, and so where do insurance companies fit into this? Have they played a role in, in some of these partnerships that you, that you have? Absolutely, yeah. So we work both through, um, you can work with Fitbit directly. You can work um, through partners. So sometimes there's corporate wellness organizations that provide services. And sometimes that company is your health plan or your insurance. Um, and you know, really, they have the same motivations around. They're helping. Uh, they want to reduce healthcare costs, reduce claim costs on their end. Um, so we have seen cases where um, there's another uh, business case that we have of a company called Aperio who um, received some front funds from their employ from their health plan hmm. to help fund their wellness program. With that, they took a survey. The survey resoundingly said people wanted Fitbit trackers, and so they subsidized, again, Fitbit trackers for the employees, turned that into a program, um, and then subsequently reduced their health care insurance, went back to their mm -hmm. health plan and said, we want to renegotiate, look at how successful and how um, you know, active our population is. And mm -hmm. they were able to do that successfully to the tune of, I think it's um, about $350,000, which for a smaller organization like Aperio was a, a fairly huge. significant yeah. number. Yeah. All right, so let's talk about some of the, the concerns or issues that we were kind of sure. you know, referencing earlier in terms of, first, um, kind of data privacy. Absolutely. Uh, you know, we've already talked about that just kind of in the consumer world. I can only imagine that getting the corporation involved only uh, you know, enhances the concerns that people have. So talk to me about how companies have addressed that part of it. Absolutely. So I think um, really important that companies, as well as so Fitbit has a very strong stance on privacy, and you know we don't rent or sell or share data without the express um, consent of the user. Um, but I also think that it's important that the employer be the steward of the employee privacy as well. So what we really want, um, what we encourage our employers to do, and in, in all cases require them to do, is to educate their employees about what data is being shared, why is it being shared, and how is it going to be used. So that level of transparency around data is really important. Um, and we found really high acceptance rate and participation rate. So if I were to say to you, well, we're only going to share, and, and I guess it's also about getting a certain level of data. So uh, a lot of our employers choose to get only aggregate data. So it's mm -hmm. de-identified at a, a very high level. Um, the, those that do choose to get individual data we're not sharing all data, it's not your weight, it's not what you ate for breakfast, it's really your steps, your distance, your active minutes, a little bit more innocuous data. 
only, again, with that individual user's consent. And then they're oftentimes tying it back to a reward or a goal. So I'm going to reduce, um, if, you know, if you meet 10,000 steps a day on average, um, at the end of the year, I'll put $100 into your healthcare savings account. So it's, it's very clear to the user and to the employee what the value proposition is. So I'm going to get this tracker. It's subsidized for me. If I show that I'm using it, there's a benefit and reward for me at the end. Right. So having that level of transparency up front, getting their express permission, mm -hmm. and then showing them how it's tied and how it's going to be used are really the keys to making um, it successful and to having that high level of participation and wanting to share their data. Okay. I know we want to get to just a few questions from the audience, so let me just ask you one more question, sure. and then you guys can kind of prepare if you if you have anything for Amy. Um, so the other concern was just kind of about the ROI, or I yeah. liked what you had termed the value on investment. Yeah, the VOI. Yes. yes. So talk to me about how, how um, are you positioning that to companies and, and really addressing their concerns about the costs that are involved? Sure. So I mean, I think um, you know a couple of things. I, I think cost sharing is really important. Again, back to that skin in the game. Mm -hmm. um, so an employer is not asked, or does not have to gift this to the employees. And actually, our recommendation is a cost share. If you can keep the cost, you know, Atlantic Packaging is a great example because they're a manufacturing. Um, and so, you know, not everyone uh, has a ton of disposable income. Um, but making, so A, we make a range of products that start at $59, right? So a $59 price point split between, you know, a couple of organizations, um, whether it be your health plan or your employer, if you're giving a, a $20 copay for that, um, it, it makes it very affordable for an employee to participate. And again, when they can turn that back into rewards or healthcare savings at the end of the year, um, that makes it a, a very affordable cost. Mm -hmm. However, because we make a range of products, you can also reach everyone, whether they're at everyday fitness, active, or performance, if they're really interested in our top of the line surge that just came out, they can also kind of what we call buy up. So instead of getting the base level model that costs us $20, they can put in a little bit more and get the product that really appeals to them. So part of that is that personalization. Mm -hmm. um, so I think keeping the cost affordable is really important. Mm -hmm. And I think looking at um, the value on the investment, again, so an all encompassing, yes, you're gonna, you know, there's, there's a return on investment like you saw with BP mm -hmm. um, in that example. Um, but there's also productivity. I mean, how often do you get, um, by the way, this uh, video was not done by us. It was done by Atlantic Packaging. We had nothing to do with it until they showed it to us and afterwards. And we're like, like, that's yes, fantastic. We'll use that. <laughs> um, but I mean, so I mean, to have your employees say thank you and this is thank you for my new way of life. I mean, that doesn't happen every day. Mm -hmm. um, and so having a package that is great benefits um, that adds to acquisition and retention of employees, you know, especially in ultra competitive spaces, um, the loyalty that employees feel, their productivity at the office. All of that needs to be measured as well. Admittedly, we're at the, the early stages of being able to, to measure all of those things mm -hmm. in a, an effective fashion. But I think just on the ROI alone, you can have results. And if you look at the VOI and kind of the feeling of community that it brings, um, it just brings that up to a whole new level. Great. All right. So, Julie, we have time for... We can do two questions. Okay. <laughs> all right. Who are the lucky two? Hi there. I was just curious if you tried to integrate Fitbit into existing wellness programs or if you just went straight to Fitbit's wellness program in itself. Great question. Um, so we actually do both. Um, and we don't think, um, so our goal is really to have you know, Fitbit trackers be an effective part of a wellness strategy. Um, we, so we do work with both health plans. We also work with corporate wellness organizations. So. Um, there's, there's a whole lot of them. Some of them are here, uh, you know, Virgin Pulse or Stay Well or um, Shape Up, any of those types of organizations. So Fitbit data, we have an open API, so our data can integrate into those, and often the, they are recommending Fitbit trackers as part of their programs and solutions. But we did find that there are a lot of employers who don't, aren't working with a third party today and needed their own, so we built some tools to kind of respond to that demand as well. Great. Thank you very much, ladies. That was a nice session. All right. Thank All right. you very much. Amy, thank you for coming thank in. Thank you. <laughs>